All right, welcome back to That 70s Card Show. I'm your host, John Keating, and I thank you for joining me as I take a look back at the cards and the culture of the very colorful 1970s. We'll revisit a more simple time in our hobby by taking a deep dive into the sets and the stats with a generous amount of dad facts sprinkled in. That 70s Card Show is currently sponsored by nobody. nobody. And if you have a comment or suggestion, I urge you to drop me a line at That 70s Card Show at gmail.com uh that 70s card show on youtube or 70s card on twitter uh this is episode 42 we'll get into the uh, meat and bones of this thing here in a second um i had a very eventful week thanks to a lot of our uh fellow content creators for welcoming me into their um fold their shows and their uh, platforms and i really appreciate it started off i believe it was tuesday that uh mike summer at wax pack hero interview uh aired our interview that we did last week uh mike summer is a great guy uh tribute to uh the hobby for sure uh, juggles a lot of things between his blog his show his his uh his uh, standalone store does a lot of online stuff as well as um um holding down a full-time job uh, on top of all that stuff so uh, it was a pleasure talking to mike mike thank you for inter- introducing me to your fan base i really appreciate it so go check out mike uh wax pack hero he is on youtube he's on um twitter as well i know that i think it's at mike summer and uh of course podcast platforms everywhere i also got to talk to uh herman and kin and uh, rich klein we talked about food issues this week and i'm not talking about um anorexia i'm talking about uh sports cards in food issues throughout history uh it really just scratched the surface of that but it was a it was fun talking to them i'm obviously a big proponent of food issues having grown up in the 70s with access to pretty much anything, um, uh, cards in everything, uh, Hostess and sodas and Slurpees and, uh, of course, Kellogg's and all that stuff. So, uh, it was fun talking about that on, uh, Herman's, uh, 3B collection channel. Uh, I think that was on YouTube and Twitter and I believe Periscope and eHarmony, J date farmers only. And, um, uh, a few other platforms that we weren't aware of, but uh, we're, we're, we were worldwide apparently. So that was with uh, Herman 3B Collection and uh, Ken uh, Beans Ball Card Blog and uh, Rich Klein. Of course, everybody knows where to find Rich. Uh, finished up kind of the week, Thursday ish, Wednesday ish. Maybe it was Wednesday. I don't know. But uh, talked to uh, uh, recent 2022. Jefferson Burdick award winner from the Sabre gang, uh, Dr. James Beckett, uh, his program will be airing. He, boy, he's got a lot of work ahead of him. Uh, he won that award. Plus he's got to edit, uh, my ramblings from the conversation that we had this week. So I apologize to Dr. Jim. It really was a, uh, a typical John Keating conversation where I was all over the place. So, uh, look out for that soon. Congratulations, Dr. Jim for that. You should have been, um, he should have been the first honoree for that award, but say la vie. Uh, and then last night I was invited onto the hobby round table again with freebie collection. And, uh, boy, that was a good time, uh, talking to folks about collecting. I'm kind of, a um, uh, new to all this, I guess. Right. So, uh, it was, it was fun meeting more people talking about cards and, uh, I could talk all night and, uh, we had a good time, um, talking last night about lots of stuff so uh episode 42 and michael jordan wore the two three and the four five but we recognize michael jordan as the two three uh recognize wayne gretzky as i believe number 99 was it and uh boy 42 you can't think of the number 42 without thinking of uh, jackie roosevelt robinson uh, this is Black History Month. Uh, Jackie Robinson passed away 50 years ago this year. Uh, he was uh, a man who obviously was was uh, taken way too early. Probably a lot of the burdens that he carried throughout his uh, career and post-career were uh, contributors to his death for sure. So um, 
I'm going to start with a little uh, little Jackie Robinson, if that's okay. Um, he didn't play in the seventies for sure, but uh, you know, I have uh, I've, I've brought up here some of my uh, Jackie Robinson cards that I do have. I have the nineteen fifty Bowman, uh, the nineteen fifty four tops, and the nineteen fifty six tops. The 50 Bowman and the 56 tops uh, have slabbed. Obviously, I'm working on getting the 54 tops done, but I bought those two slabbed cards raw probably 40 years ago. And it's amazing to think that Jackie Robinson at that point had only been dead probably 10 years. Um, so uh, his influence has only grown, I think, uh, especially in our hobby. Uh, truly, uh, he was the right man for that job. And uh, we all owe a, a debt of gratitude to him and his wife, uh, for sure, uh, his family. But, um, man, what a burden that man carried. Uh, his cards are on fire, obviously, and deservedly so. So uh, I want to read a little bit about uh, from Wikipedia from uh, about Jackie Robinson. So Robinson protested against the major league's ongoing lack of minority managers and central office personnel. And he turned down an invitation to appear in an old timers game at Yankee Stadium in 1969. He made his final public appearance on October 15th, 1972, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch before game two of the World Series at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Uh, admired and revered throughout the hobby as well as um, the world for sure. So um, 1970s, let's get on to something about the 1970s, shall we? Uh, greatest Hits albums, right? What do you think about Greatest Hits albums? Now, I, I'm a big fan of uh, getting as much bang for your buck as possible. Obviously, uh, there is... Um, still to this day, there's a lot of fill and not a thrill, a lot of thrill in some of the albums that, um, you buy and that's nothing new that happened way back when the first greatest hits album was Johnny Mathis's Johnny's greatest hits. And that was released in 1958. Uh, the album collected eight of Mathis's charting signals as singles, as well as three non-charting B sides and an altogether new track. Now you may be surprised to hear this out there but the uh number one selling album of all time in the united states of america is uh eagles their greatest hits uh their first uh version of that was 1971 through 1975 hits they put out a second album greatest hits volume two or number two which was uh, just as good if you ask me but this was all thrill and no fill so the eagles uh their greatest hits is the best sell selling album of all time in the united states according to billboard it has sold over 38 million copies uh, elton john's greatest hits is the best selling greatest hits album by a solo artist according to the same chart so this uh greatest hits album uh has the distinction of being the first album to receive the uh riaa platinum award which is um which was introduced in 1976 to recognize albums that shipped 1 million copies in the United States. It received its certification on February 24th, 1976, a week after the album was released. 
It was certified 12 times platinum in August 1990, 14 times platinum in 1993, 22 times platinum in 1995, and then became the best-selling album of the 20th century in the United States when it was certified 26 times platinum on November 10th, 1999. Oddly enough, in an interview in 2001, Randy Meisner, who was the original bass player, and Bernie Layden, who was the original guitar player of, for the for Eagles, uh, were not notified uh, by the band or the record company that this had happened. So they uh, finally had to call and get their um, their their certifications uh, or their big platinum albums. Um, it was certified 29 times platinum in January of uh, 2006, August 2018. It was certi certified 38 times platinum under a new system that tallies album and track sales as well as streams. It again became the highest certified album by the RIAA, surpassing Michael Jackson's Thriller, which is certified 35 or 34 million times platinum. Uh, let me look at something here real quick, if you don't mind. Fortunately for me, I have one of these uh, platinum albums right here. Uh, this is for um, 10,000 Maniacs, Our Time in Eden, 1 million copies. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff they get. Of course, this is only a uh, this is only 1 million. Imagine one with 38 discs on it. It would be pretty massive. So uh, let's go over to track listing real quick here. I know it's a baseball card show, but stay, stay with me here. I have, a, I have a point to make here. Uh, side one, take it easy, witchy woman, lion eyes, already gone, and desperado. Side two, one of these nights, tequila sunrise, take it to the limit, peaceful, easy feeling, and best of my love. All thrill, um, cruising down the highway in your Detroit steel with um, bench seats, your baby by your side, no air conditioning in your car, popping on that so that album. You, there's worse things in the world for sure. Now, if you want to get more uh, great music from the 70s, greatest hits albums, this is going to be uh, round out my top five here. So we have the greatest hits by Eagles, Bob Marley and the Whalers, Legend, Neil Young, Decade, uh, greatest hits by Fleetwood Mac, and a decade of Steely Dan. Now, I realize some of those albums might have some 80s songs on it, but they have some great, great, great 70s songs so uh part of that was inspired by mike from uh this baseball card life he had asked me to send him some uh recommendations for some music so it's really hard to pick albums but um greatest hits albums man i'm all over that stuff uh, so yeah that's that so why are we talking about um the greatest hits albums well we're going to look at the 2001 upper deck decade the 1970s set now i came upon this set uh, i was uh my amish collection that i'm almost done uh, logging in i popped up a nolan ryan card and that i didn't have and i have a lot of nolan ryan cards i'll throw it over here on my uh cam my camera so that card pops up and uh boy i don't know what that is and it has an upper deck logo and and uh, i log it into my beckett opg and i come to find out wow there's a set called uh, you know, decade in 1970s by Upper Deck, released in 2001. So I immediately uh, ran, not walked to eBay to find one of these, and I was able to procure one. Uh, probably overpaid, but I love the 70s. You may not have noticed that, but I do love the 70s. So uh, here we go. We're going to talk about uh, a, a set released in 2001 that is all about the 1970s. And these cards are um, glossy. They're bright. They're everything you expect the 70s to be. And um, let's get on with it. So, uh, again, Upper Deck made this thing 2001. Uh, 180 total cards with a boatload. And uh boatload is 19 or more inserts. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but there are a ton of inserts. Uh, I think it was $2.99 for a pack, five cards per pack. So they're jamming you for 60 cents a card right there. Uh, no solo packs, no rack packs from what I can gather. 24 packs in a wax box. A blaster, which you don't normally associate with the 1970s, contained eight packs per box. Not sure what the uh, retail 
price was for that. January 18th, 2001 was when this set was released. Uh, all together, I guess, in one, one fell swoop. Uh, it's got a league license, and it's got the uh, Cooperstown collection license because it features no active players at that time. Um, tons of inserts, like I said. Standard size, 2.5 by 3.5. There are no rookie cards in this, uh, but we do talk a little bit about rookies um, as the set goes on. Uh, front of the card. Let's talk a little bit about the fronts of the cards here. Uh, put some here on the camera. Uh, fronts of the cards. Uh, and I'm going to bring up some uh, schmutz here so I can kind of see what's going on. So uh, Bob Horner, we brought up Bob Horner there. And um, Bob Horner is a uh, did that for Herman, actually. Uh, you don't see him on too many of these um, content creator shows. So uh, front of the cards, as you can see there, Braves with a trademark at the top. Uh, Tricolor uh, uh, border around this, John. Uh, white is uh, predominant throughout these cards. There's a couple of different color variations. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we have Bob Horner here. Uh, kind of like reminiscent of that 75 set, but they got a little bit different there by putting that white band in the middle. Um, name on the bottom, uh, position underneath that, and then there's a funky little upper deck logo in the bottom left of the card, which uh, is reminiscent of the 1974 top set. So I uh, wonder how they got away with that, kind of the banners on the bottom there. And uh, yeah, so... Back of the card, uh, a little bit different of a um, a color um, pattern there. Same uh, white band across the middle, but as you can see, the purple still on the bottom, but there's orange on the top here for Bob Horner. Uh, what I love about this set, one of the things I love about this set is the fact that there are career stats um, displayed on the backs of the cards. And one of the things I fell in love with in 1976 top, the all-time greats, was you could see all those old timers career records same thing going on here and these are guys from the 70s uh, most of them played well into the 80s as well um let's see here uh blah 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 um so uh again we have the player's name all that junk on the front um there's no uh rookie cups or anything like that all star stuff that's all uh, uh referred to in the subsets that we'll get to in a minute here um no multiplayer cards, but they did miss an opportunity there because they have a, um, as you'll see here in a second, they have a subset that features the award winners from the 1970s. So uh, all of these are vertical cards or portrait uh, cards. Uh, no horizontals here. Same with the back. So uh, the the multiplayer card would have been great for 1979. Keith Hernandez and Willie Stargell sharing the MVP, but uh, wasn't meant to be, I suppose. Um, Let's see here. Uh, so the back of the card, let's get back to the back of the card. Sorry, I digressed. Um, we have uh, player's name again, no player number. Uh, date of birth is on there. Their, where they were born is on there. No home. Um, their height's on there. Their weight's on there. No college, no draft, no acquire, nothing like that. Again, career stats and year-by-year -year stats are on there as well. Uh, there is uh, some bio information on the back of these cards uh for the players and no offense to bob horner but for players that did not have a lot of uh stats like a nolan ryan or um you know mike schmidt guys who played for a very long time there is a 70s related trivia question on the bottom uh this one says who is the only player to play for a team in each of the four divisions in one season um unfortunately my stuff is so blurry that I need to look at the actual card to see that. So uh, stand by, don't walk away. And of course, in order to see that, I need to get my uh, my glasses on. Don't have my glasses, so I'll check my loop. So the answer to your trivia question, if you don't already know it, is Dave Kingman. Uh, played for uh, four teams, uh, four divisions in one season. Which is interesting because... Uh, Pretty sure there were only two divisions back then in the 70s. So maybe they uh, meant all four divisions in both leagues. That's pretty impressive. Two division deeds. Anyway, uh, 
trademarks on the bottom. Uh, there's extensive uh, verbiage from Upper Deck. Uh, and you got your MLB logo. You have your Cooperstown Collection logo. And you have the standard Upper Deck logo as well. And you have the ubiquitous, I will not say that again, um, Upper Deck hologram in the bottom right in the form of a baseball diamond. So uh, that's kind of the layout there of the standard card. Uh, subsets. We have lots of subsets, but we have no team cards on this, obviously. Uh, so uh, subsets, let's talk about the e, uh, award winners first. Award winners are 141 through 170. And I have brought up Dave Parker, who is in the foyer of fame. I believe he will be in the Hall of Fame someday, hopefully. These guys are um, purple, all purple. That They've abandoned the tricolor uh, theme there and um, all purple all the time on the front and back a little bit of a white band that goes into a that fades in and out of the top and the bottom purple areas uh this man this is a dead on on rip off of the 74 top set so inside that purple white border on the outside you have a gold uh, band and then the top and bottom uh, top says award winners in the uh kind of the black pennant 1970s next to it pirates uh Kind of humbly displayed above that. Uh, barely see that. Dave Parker here is uh, got a nice swing going and a little funky artistic work to blend out the background to make him look like he's swinging in space. Uh, another one of those, uh, I guess it's a card within a card because uh, Upper Deck threw in their, uh, on the bottom right, they threw in their logo again or their, their decade 1970s logo again, which is almost an exact copy of the bigger card with an Upper Deck within that uh and then bottom uh right says dave parker outfield uh and there is an award there this is the 1978 nl mvp and dave parker's wearing one of those great uniforms from the 70s yellow top and black pants with yellow stripes uh and then there's a little bit a blurb about uh, dave parker's season in 1978 and this is the, the case for all the award winners um they feature a lot of award winners here they have um uh, Let's see here. I'm going to grab the set from me. Got yourself some MVPs. You got Cy Young's, um, Rookie of the Years. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff we're highlighting here. Again, I think that they missed a point or a chance to do a, a, a multiplayer card in 1979 with Parker or with uh, Stargell and Hernandez. But so be it. Um, stats on the back of this card are the 1980 and 19. 78 season or the season the players being recognized for and uh, below that is their career stats again all these funky little uh, upper deck and holograms and cooperstown collection and major league baseball logos on there love them uh, i think that's great i think they're actually a, a nice part of the card uh, usually when i do these sets it usually says uh, tcg uh copyright and all that stuff but uh, this is obviously a little bit more entailed so it's it's neat seeing that happen so um yeah so that's your uh how that front and back looks here i'll see if i can bring up uh my card camera and then you can kind of see what these things look like they all look the same so um kind of neat little cards again they're all kind of superimposed on on a blue background uh with a little highlation behind them um them their players Next up, we have our World Series subset. So uh, World Series subset is uh, a little classier. It's done kind of in black. Uh, I just whacked the crap out of my uh, card cam, so apologize to the card cam. Um, yeah, so uh, the World Series subset, uh, of course, I had to pick uh, Reginald Martinez Jackson for this. Uh, black cards, I think, uh, kind of a bluish white pinstripe running vertically down the front. Inside is kind of a nice little take on the 72 design where we have an arch across the top a little bit, followed by a, and, you know, with a square border around that. That's all blue. Uh, it says World Series and then the year uh, above series says 1973 in this case. Below that says Highlights. And that's on that uh, black and pinstriped background, white, blue, whatever you can, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I want to call it blue. I looked at the cards. So uh, blue pinstripes, black background, blah, 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 blah. Player in action um, inside of that. And then, of course, in the bottom left is that 74 knockoff upper deck kind of box logo thing. 
And then with inside of this uh, little border or this little frame, it says Jackson earns his first World Series MVP award. 73 would be Jackson's second World Series title out of five that he earned in the decade of the 1970s. Back of the card, same pattern, black, blue pinstripes, same World Series logo on the upper right, card number in the upper left, uh, same kind of 72 arch frame thing and a little some highlights of the uh of the uh the world series there uh i think they have the box score or the line not the box score but just the i guess the line score of uh the last game it says three one athletics over mets and again our our normal uh logos underneath that let me get rid of uh let me get rid of this picture here and you can kind of see here we have uh, i'll run through these guys with you real quick here uh we have brooks in 70, we have uh, Roberto Clemente in 71, uh, Gene Tennis, 72, Reggie, 73, and that awesome, awesome green uniform. So uh, we love the green uniforms from back then. All green, folks, all the time. Uh, 74, of course, another A, Raleigh Fingers, uh, Carlton Fisk, 75, um, Greatest World Series ever, most people say. Uh, 76, greatest offensive team, John Keating says. The Reds, Johnny Bench there. Uh, Reggie in 77, Bucky Dent 78, and Pops in 79 uh, leading the way um, with that card. So that's your 1970s World Series subset. And then we move on to the rookie subset, which is uh, quite beefy there. It's uh, cards 91 through 110. I put in here a guy that we also rarely see in the, in any of the content creator stuff, and that's Jack Clark. Jack Clark uh, means nothing to me other than that uh, my wife's maiden name is Clark, uh, not Jack. It's Clark. Uh, front of the cards mirror the 75 set a little bit closer than the uh, standard issue cards because uh, the band, the white band is real, real narrow. And, uh, yeah, it says Giants across the top. Uh, trademark there, of course. Uh, Jack Clark dot outfield. Jack Clark is in a nice pose, wearing wearing some of that um, wearing some of that nineteen uh, seventies uh, Giants love, which is an orange top with uh, white pants. So pretty impressive there. Um, the uh, upper deck logo, the seventy four upper deck logo that we think, and then on the back of the card the um, uh, the blue is on the bottom now, and the lime green is on the top, as and uh, which is opposite of uh, the front of Jack Clark's card. It says "Rookie 1970s Flashback" across the top, and then a blurb about uh, Jack Clark and uh, whatnot, and whomever, uh, whoever else, the rookies that are featured. Uh, same thing as the MVP stuff; it has his rookie year stats as well as his uh, career stats. I think it says below there 18 year stats, and then below that is all the um, legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, so, uh, yeah, quite a few, uh, quite a few, uh, impressive people in this rookie set. Uh, Carlton Fisk is in there. Andre Dawson, um, uh, Fred Lynn, Eddie Murray, uh, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, let me go through these real quick here. So, uh, yeah, Andre Dawson, Fred Lynn, Eddie Murray, Bob Horner again, uh, John Matlack, Mike Cargrove. Uh, you have your Robin Yount, which is interesting because there's no, uh, Robin Yount, um, base card i believe maybe i'm wrong uh gary carter's in there yada 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 you get a nice shot of uh ozzy smith in his uh in his uh san diego padre uniform right there so cool stuff there um so yeah that's the rookie set right there uh moving on to the final subset and that's the decade dateline subset and that's uh probably that's the biggest subset so that goes uh 111 through 140 in the set and uh, that is all the cool stuff that happened in a decade of the um, 70s. And uh, I chose to uh, kind of bring up our uh, Billy Williams because Billy Williams runs neck and neck with uh, Roberto Clemente for the nicest, uh, easygoing look on baseball cards. He just had a great, um, a great vibe. Sounds like you'd, you'd look at Billy Williams and you just want to hang out with the guy, right? So this again kind of follows the 70s, uh, the 72 tops uh, set up uh, red cards with 
yellow horizontal stripes across them. Uh, so horizontal pinstripes, uh, a lot, of, lot going on there. Kind of tells us uh, in the arch, it says decade uh, dateline and then what he's being highlighted for. In this case, Williams plays in 1,117 consecutive games. Um, Billy Williams on the bottom below the Cubs and on each side of Billy Williams is kind of a highlight of uh, like what year, I think it was 1970. Let me look at this card here that he played in uh, that streak. I think it says 1970. So uh, back of the card, uh, same thing, red with the yellow uh, stripes across the horizontals and uh, 111 is this card number. And that's in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, same kind of 72 back arch deal and a blurb from September, 1963 through September, 1970 Williams played in an NL record, 1,117 consecutive games. The Cubs outstanding outfielder surpassed Stan Musial's previous record on September 29th, 1969 on Billy Williams day at Wrigley field. Williams consecutive games streak stood until Steve Garvey broke it in 1983. Uh, nice little Cubs logo on the back there, uh, prominently featured uh, on the lower third and uh, outfield Cubs and then all the other jazz. So uh, that's kind of the whole setup there. Let me get rid of this. And then uh, maybe if you want to look, you can see there's a like I said, there's a bunch of cards in there. Uh, Nolan Ryan pitches two no hitters in one year. Uh, Ron Guidry's ERA, Bucky Dent does whatever Bucky Dent does. Willie Stargell becomes Pops or Pops is patriarch, patriarch of the family. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, good little set. Now, what do I take away from this set, right? I love the 70s, but they could have done a lot of things uh, better here. On uh, the rookie flashbacks, um, I think Dawson, Matlack, Hargrove, Yount, and by 11. So yeah, it does have a base card, but those players there and Thurman Munson all have uh, the same picture they're using in their rookie flashback cards as they are in their uh, base card. Um, Paul Molitor has no base card, but he has a rookie flashback. Uh, same with Dale Murphy. Um, in the decade dateline, there's several players that don't have a base card uh, award winners. There's several uh, repeat photos there. Uh, World Series, there's also some uh, repeat photos there. Now, my biggest knock on this is uh, there's a lot of players that are not involved in this set. Uh, Jim Palmer won, Jim Rice, Carl Michael Yastrzemski, Louis Tiant, who could have been featured in the Indians or the Red Sox. Uh, he's not in there. George Brett, Carew, who could have been there with the Twins or Angels, Bob Gibson, Ernie Banks, Don Sutton, Willie Mays, um, Steve Carlton, and uh, Peter Edward Rose uh, were not featured in the set at all. And they all played in the seventies and all did some uh, whiz bang stuff in the seventies. Um, so that's obviously a licensing thing. I get it. Um, understand that. But uh, it really uh, taking those players out of the seventies was, was, um, was uh, it's a pretty big deal. If you ask me. And uh, another thing that bothers me is these cards kind of come in uh the numeric order follows the team. So the angels are the first, uh, the first cards in there. Um, Don Ryan, Don Bell or Bobby Gritch. Um, yeah. So they're the first cards and then followed by the athletics. So, and so, well, they have the brewers with the national league, um, running after the Braves, which makes no sense to me. I mean, I understand that, uh, I understand that the brewers are now in the national league, but why, why, uh, if you're going back in time to a 70 set, why would you have the Brewers in the um, National League? I don't understand it. I was looking for the Brewers. There's no Brewers. And I realized, oh, they're after the Braves. So uh, I took out my pencil and figured it out that uh, for some reason they did it that way. It doesn't make sense uh, for that. There's two Blue Jays in this. Uh, so John, uh, I think John Mayberry and Rico Cardi are uh, celebrated as Blue Jays. And there's exactly one uh mariner in the base set and that is um rupert jones so uh yeah that's that that's the 1970s uh decade 1970s uh set released by upper deck in 2001 and um 
you know, I like the set. It's a good set. I don't think it's a great set, but, uh, you know, it's a fun set that almost encompasses most of the seventies. Uh, if that's not being vague enough for you. And, um, yeah, again, any set that doesn't have Carl Yastrzemski and it bothers the crap out of me, but what are you going to do? Uh, anyway, so that's that I, you know, appreciate you guys watching and listening and, um, hearing my babbles about the 70s of course uh again february black history month jackie robinson left us 50 years ago this year 75 years ago he broke the color barrier so um let's make sure that we uh enjoy mr robinson and uh his cars and his legacy and uh keep all that going for as long as we can still got a ways to go uh and that's that so thank you for joining me this week in my journey back in time if you have a comment or suggestion, uh, perhaps you have a set from the 1970s you'd like to hear more about or are interested in maybe coming on this here show, just drop me a line at that 70s card show at gmail.com. Uh, you can comment uh, on YouTube at that 70s card show or reach out to me on Twitter at 70s card. So uh, again, thanks. Mango Safari is playing us off on the big podcast enjoy collecting folks and more importantly enjoy your collection have a wonderful safe great week